Welcome back, everybody, to Three Point Lines here on The Parlay. I'm your host, Luca Rosano, alongside my co-host, Noor Zainab. And we are back on this Thursday with a six-game night to get to. We only want to get to how we did last night. Just laughable, especially on my part. I was one of nine. I only got one right. And now I am hitting 49% of my picks right. I am failing. And Noor is just passing. She's at the 50% mark. But we, we got to up our game here. I don't know what's going on. Can someone explain math to me? Like, how does math work? I got four out of nine last right last night, and that took a whopping hit from what, 54% to 50%. And now I'm like, so I can't afford to lose anything. So if I lose anything, I'm going to go to the 30 percentile margin. And that's when Kevin's going to fire both of us. So yeah, this is getting bad. And the worst part is we're both gloating last week saying how we're going to hit these all time records and highs of 57%. And we've only gone down from that point on. So let's not brag anymore. Let's just make these picks and hopefully we can write the ship here. And we're going to start Minnesota Detroit. We're just going to get right into it. Let's get right into it. People want some winning picks. So Minnesota Detroit, what do you got for us, Nora? Wow, we are we have been humbled properly. All right, Minnesota and Detroit. Minnesota here is uh, favored by minus seven. I love that. It's my team. And Cade is probably not going to be playing for the Detroit Pistons tonight, which I think is a massive hit for them just because of who he is and how he's been playing recently. He's such a massive ball distributor, not just um, an anchor in every single way, but also just a shot taker, right? He is their offensive power. And if he's not there, if he was there, I would have given them the edge to at least cover it. But without him, I don't know how they stop Ant-Man. How do, how do, how do you stop Cat? D'Angelo Russell is probably not going to be playing for this one either. But Wolves have been a really good team. They've won up two in a row now. They've won 10 of their last 15. And this is just a Pistons team that I'm not – I can't trust them. I don't know who they are. I don't know what you do without Cade. Um, and you're just going to lose. So give me the Wolves. What about you? Yeah, we're going to start this show. I think how we started last show, disagreeing. I'm going to go Ooh. with the, uh, the points. I'm going to go with uh, Detroit. So – Kate is questionable. There's still a slight chance he could go, and the same could be said about Beverly and, and Russell for the Wolves. But you look at this Pistons team, they're 25 and 25 against the spread. Wolves are 25 and 25 and 1. So both these teams are even keel when it comes to covering the number. And also, um, for as bad as um, the Pistons have been, they've actually covered five of their last seven games. And the Wolves, they've been winning games, but they've only covered in four of their last 10. So I'm going to go with the points. I think Detroit shows up in this spot and they're much better at home compared to on the road. I mean, that's not saying much because they're eight and 16 at home, but that's compared to four and 22 on the road. So if I'm ever going to bet on the Pistons, it will be as a home dog. Mm -hmm. I think they can cover the seven. I hope I'm not, you know, kicking myself tomorrow, but I will go with Detroit hoping that they, they, they keep this game close. And hopefully by some way, Kate could suit up, but even if he doesn't, I'll still ride with the Pistons here. I see you just want to beat me. Eh? You're like, we're going the opposites route. Head ahead. You know what? I, re- I admire it. I like this strategy. All right. Are you going to be a homer today? Chicago and the Toronto Raptors, where the Raptors are favored by minus three and a half. It's, it's weird. Honestly, I'm surprised that the Raptors are favorites here. The odds makers are giving the Raptors their flowers. They're just what? telling people, look, this team, you don't want to bet against them right now. So I was quite shocked when I did see this uh, opening line. I thought it was minus three and a half for Chicago, but then I had to double look at it. And so I was for the Raptors, but I will go with the Bulls. I'm not going to be a homer. I think Chicago getting points is a very good value pick here. To my knowledge, the big three is going to be there. And to my knowledge, the Marta Rosen usually shows up against his former team. And I think this game will be close as every Raptors game has been over the past couple of weeks. But I just like... Chicago's ability to close out games more so than I do like the Raptors. They got those guys that can warrant getting foul calls late in the game, DeRozan, Levine. And we saw in their last meeting how big of a factor that was where the whistle didn't really benefit the Raptors and went to the Bulls side. So I think this is going to be a fantastic game. I really do, but I got to go with Chicago. Chicago is first right now in the East. So it's very shocking that they're even an underdog in this spot. I think they're going to play with a bit of a chip on their shoulder, especially DeRozan, who always does that. So give me the Bulls here to cover plus three and a half. Do you know why they're first in the East? Because the Raptors beat the Heat twice. That's That's why they're first. So you're welcome, Chicago Bulls. You're welcome, DeMar DeRozan. Um, You know, I, I respect it. I see where you're coming from. I was the same way, too, where I'm just like, you can't. 
You just never know what version of the Raptors you will get in terms of the fourth quarter. Are they going to keep up? Are they going to give the game away? I just, you just never really know, but I'm going to be a Homer Simpson today. I think the Raptors take this. (laughs) I think um, DeRozan is bound to have a quieter night tonight. We let him have his thing, but today I feel like you get your defense on and having Gary Trent Jr. back in that lineup as well is going to be massive for this Raptors team who can finally put up shots and have someone who can just be a pure bucket getter. Um, And I think that's going to be huge just to help them out in terms of um, putting up offensive powers just because DeRozan's really good at obviously shooting. You also have Vooch there. You've got Levine, who they have their offensive weapons, but we needed that with Gary Trent. And on the other side, you've seen all the other players come through too. OG's having a better game. Pascal is almost having one of his better seasons than he's ever played. Um, You see Fred Van Vliet about to almost make the all-star game. I just think that how they've been able to handle the past couple of weeks um, going through injuries, extended minutes, and tight playoff rotations almost in January, and coming back from fake comebacks, going from fake comebacks to actually having proper victories, I feel like they've almost... Uh, got themselves ready for this game like it's as if like they should be coming here prepared they know what to do they know how to win I I see why the spread is tight and I prefer it to be tight because it should be a close game with them but I just think Toronto should take this line I think this is the Raptors I'm gonna be a homer but I have a very good feeling that you know they go off tonight but we'll see I don't know wow I'm actually uh, quite surprised you did go with the Raps here, and I'm even more surprised that we're uh, disagreeing with our first two games of the night. Someone's percentage will look crazy tomorrow. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next game, we got Suns taking on the Hawks. Trey Young should be suiting up for this one. The Suns are minus four and a half favorites. Yeah, the Hawks have won seven of eight. They've only dropped one that was without Trey, I believe, against um, Toronto, and Suns have won 11 straight. Suns are just the Suns, right? Like they are showing everyone who they are. Number one in the, in the league, the finals, um, you know, finalists for a reason. They've, they've just been a great, great team. And the Hawks are also on a run right now. They, we have talked about how they had, hadn't really been themselves early on this season, but they are turning that around and coming into their own. But I just don't think that this is the matchup for them. Like, yeah, you're having great games. Yeah, you're on a hot streak. But this is when you get heat checked against the, the Suns. And Suns, with, they've shown to us too. This is a team that's had to go through adversity, having to plug guys in and out of lineups, having to have that next man up mentality. And through all of that, CP3, Book, and Bridges have just been coming out on top. And yeah, I just this is a team that's made for the fourth quarter. They're made to erase deficits in the last minute. And I like I can't pick them. I can't not pick them. They give me money. Yeah. They make me money. They make me look smart. I'm going to go with it, just like the Grizzlies. So give me the Suns. What about you? Yeah, they've only lost once this uh, this new year. It, it's incredible how the Suns keep on winning. And um, you look at them, they're 12 and 6 as a road favorite. And they don't blow all teams, but they take care of business in the fourth yeah. quarter. I think I read somewhere they're undefeated, actually, when they have the lead after three quarters. Like, this is a team that you can't really expect them to have an off night anymore. They usually yeah. show up, and it doesn't matter if they're all at home, on the road. This is a team that comes to play, and Atlanta's defense hasn't v- been very good, so I really don't trust them against an elite offense like the Phoenix Suns that can get it going at any time. So we see what Chris Paul can do with that team. Devin Booker, he's been going off. And yeah, the Suns just keep on winning, and I, I like how you kind of compare them to the Grizzlies they have been a pretty safe bet when it comes to covering the number, whether they're at home on the road, it doesn't matter. This team's continuously getting it done. I take Grizzlies every single day. I see them on the score app. I'm like, yep, that's what 20 bucks for me. It's just, just, you know, you got to go with uh, the ones that really laid the spread who are really good teams. And Suns just happen to be one of those guys. Now, on the other side, we see the Miami Heat facing off the San Antonio Spurs, Spurs sorry, where the Heat are favored by minus four and a half. And Lowry might be back for this one. Any thoughts? Yeah, this is the most interesting game of the night. um, Because the Miami Heat, they've lost three in a row. They've fallen from grace a little bit. But they could be getting Lowry back. And they're going to be relatively healthy. But at the same time, I talked about this yesterday. The San Antonio Spurs have such great value at home. You actually look at their last couple of home games. They've not only won a couple of big ones. But they've kept it close against good teams. I'm talking about teams like the Warriors, the 76ers. 
So if you're ever going to bet on the Spurs, it is getting some home value with this team. Miami, I don't know what it is. They're just not striking me as that same threat. And if Kyle does go tonight, we'll see how big of an impact and factor he is for this team. But if he doesn't, this could be a tough spot for Miami. I could see them win, but I like that I'm getting that four and a half. That that half a point is really tempting me of taking a very good value home team in the Spurs. Murray's been going off. And I think they can catch Miami here, who is in a bit of a slump right now. So I will take the Spurs of keeping this game extra close, plus four and a half. What's your strategy today? That's, that's, I like it, actually. I like this first pick here. Um, yeah, you know what? You're right. This is also one for me that I was uh, questioning and I was just going over just because we have talked about Spurs in the past as well. But anytime I do, they end up proving me wrong. They have been that team. They've been okay. They've been climbing up the rankings and their, their role players have been coming through. And of course, when you have Pop, you've got Pop. He will make those adjustments and he will make sure that the right people plug in at the right time. However... I just can't, I can't compute the fact that Miami has so many more offensive weapons that the, than the Spurs do. Um, I just don't know how they can stop all that the all that the Heat have. They've got if Butler plays, if Tucker plays, if Lowry plays, you've still got Robinson, you still have Hero, you still have everyone on the roster who can produce shots and make their own plays. And just against that, against this Miami team, I know they've been a little bit shaky lately, but I think it's also because I've been watching them get beat to the Raptors um, and against any other team that they're just the same Miami Heat. So I'm going to, I'm going to give them the edge to probably cover the spread here, but I don't blame you in going with the Spurs way. Cause I think that they could still make it a game. Spurs are a team right now that just very sneakily can pull out wins that they have no business pulling out. So yeah. I can see how they can for sure cover the spread too. Yeah, I mean, just the other night, they only lost by four against yeah. the Golden State Warriors. Warriors. So that says a lot about this team, especially when they're at home. All right, next game. This should be a good one, the Battle of L.A., but it will be missing its stars. LeBron might not be going for this one. Obviously, George and Kawhi aren't going to be going for the Clippers. And as a result, the Clippers are getting the odds makers attention as the favorites here. They are going to open up as three and a half point favorites. So who do you like in this uh, battle of LA of LA? Yeah. Say that 10 times fast. <laughs> I don't want to. I mean, you know what? It makes sense why they're a favorite here. There's no LeBron in the way that the Lakers have been playing recently. It just has not been Laker basketball or any winning kind of basketball really. Um, but I, I don't know. I think I feel, I feel like I'm going based off feelings today. I'm not looking at numbers. I'm just like, how do I feel about this matchup? For some reason, I think that the Lakers are going to want to assert assert themselves here. This is the Lakers. This is a Clipper game. This is a Laker game. This is, you know, this goes down in history as the enemies, as the rivals of this of the NBA, no matter what. So I think that this is just kind of embed in their brain that you got to beat this team. You have to come out and show out. And Westbrook should come alive for this one. He's been a bit quiet, and I don't see the Clippers having an answer for him if he's able to get his offense offense going. And if he's there, AD's there, Malik Monk is there, I just I don't know how the Clippers can replicate that type of offense. They are a really good defensive team, and that's what the Lakers lack. But in this scenario, just having the best player beat for the, the Lakers, I'm going to give the edge to the Lakers here. I picked them to lose last night, and I – yeah. Yeah, no, I, I like this pick. I'm going to go with the Lakers too. Um, you know, both of these teams, they're 500 teams. And I'm surprised the Clippers are actually getting some points here as a favorite. Um, the Lakers are four and four against the spread in their last eight games. And they are 11 and 13 against the spread on the road, which isn't that bad. I mean, they do have a better against the spread on the road than the Clippers do against the spread at home where the Clippers are just 12 and 15. So yeah, I, I like that. And you bring up a good point. When you look at just overall star power, with these two depleted teams, the Lakers are going to have the best player out there on the court in theory and Anthony Davis. So he should be able to take over. He should be able to have a big game. And even Westbrook, I expect this game to be really in Westbrook's favor of uh, it being a fun matchup between he and Reggie Jackson, but the Lakers, I got to give them the slight advantage here. I know they didn't look good last night. I, I thought we had that one in the bag because they had a big lead and then Portland came all the way back. But then I ended up seeing they lost. Uh, they won, pardon me. Um, but their offense looked very bad to begin that game. So I'm hoping we don't get that same Laker offense tonight. But I think overall, the Lakers should do enough to win this game. So yeah, I, I like them plus three and a half here. I think there's value here with them being an underdog. Let's see which version we get of them tonight. All comes down to them. All right, last game of the night, still in the Western Conference, the Kings and the Golden State Warriors, where the Warriors are favored by minus 13 and a half. 
too big for you? Yeah, this one I was going back and forth a ton. We saw yeah. a lot of upsets last night. We didn't even talk about at the top of the show where these big spreads ended up losing. The Mavericks come to mind. Good job with that pick. You took the thunder. You. <laughs> Honestly, I'm going with the points. I, I got, uh, I I'm afraid based on these numbers, lane points. I tried to be a hero, lane some massive spreads last night. It obviously bit me uh, from behind. Tonight, mm -hmm. I know the Kings are very, very bad, but they've only had only a few really bad losses over the last 10 games. And they've kept it close against the likes of the Bucks, the Sixers, and even the Pistons. Whereas the Warriors, they're winning games. They're on this massive win streak, but they haven't really been blowing teams out. The only game that comes to mind was that epic win against the, the Mavs where they blew them up at like 35. Other than that, they've just been doing enough to win. So uh, I will side with the Kings here. They are four and six against the spread in back-to-backs. It's not going to be pretty. But I, I do expect the Kings to not lose by a huge landslide. I, I'm thinking they definitely lose, but I'm hoping it's under 10. So I will take the Sacramento Kings here plus 13 and a half. It's not the sexiest of picks, but hey, I, I'm not siding with this big of a number, especially after last night. After last night, do whatever you got to do. No one's going to judge. Trust me. No, you're right. This is a, this is a pick that makes you sit there for a second and wonder, do I want to do this or not? But I, I think you're right. This is the Kings. Last night, they beat the Nets. They beat the Nets last night. Kyrie Irving had 14 points. James Harden had five points. He went two over 11 or something like that. And Kyrie was like, I mean, I'm sure it's, it's, it's an off, you know, Brooklyn night. But I would just imagine that kind of... Um, adrenaline you know knowing that you just beat the nets you just beat harden and Kyrie. that should bode well for you just me mentally and going into this game with the golden state warriors um who have been like you mentioned very very well like they've been kind of streaky where yeah they win games but they don't really win games outright they make you wait until the very last second to be like hey do i make money do i not make money like it's very much like you you have to play at their pace and watch at their pace. And I understand why you're still getting players back in the lineup. You still don't have, don't have Dermot Draymond Green there. Iguodala is still in and out. But uh, just based off of that, I think the Kings should be able to cover. You already mentioned the Golden State Warriors played the Spurs and the Spurs only lost by what, four points. And yeah, that's a really good Spurs team. But And the Kings are a terrible team. We've talked about this all the time. They're not that great. Um, I even saw somewhere that like as a road underdog, they're covering in just like 37% of their games. But yeah. I just think that this is going to be one of those games that they bounce, not just bounce back, but they just cover the spread at the very least. Like Warriors are just not to be um, trusted with a big spread right now. I don't trust them to blow anybody out. I trust them to win, but I think the Kings can make us both money tonight. I hope, please. Yeah, no, look, that's a good point you bring up too. They are coming off that big win against the Nets. So that was a straight up upset. Yeah. And uh, when you're dealing with this many points, all it takes really is for a run to happen. Even if these guys are getting blown out in the fourth, but the Warriors sit everybody and the Kings go on a run, you could backdoor cover. So that's yeah, exactly hopefully I... uh, they don't get obliterated tonight <laughs> or else we're going to look dumb once again. Honestly, that's kind of the route that I would look at whenever I see a big spread because I'm like, yeah, sure, okay. If a team wins, if the starters win that big, that's that's fine. But once the bench comes on, that lead will go away, and yeah. that's when you make the money. But just like that, that's it for Three Point Lines today with me, Nor Zainab, and my co-host, Luca Rosano. Thanks so much for joining us. You'll see two new fresh faces tomorrow and Michael Singh and Jelani Reed, and they'll take it away. Take care.